I strongly believe that um, the program in Liberia, the Center for Peace Education, deserves much attention, especially when we talk about global effects or global circumstances. The children in Liberia who have experienced violence, who are not reintegrated into the culture, who are not reintegrated into schools, who doesn't have anything to do. They wake up in the morning, get high on drugs, they get drunk on alcohol, who don't have anything to do. I can bet you tomorrow morning, if they are called upon to go into Guinea and go wage war, they will be more than happy to go into Guinea. Tomorrow morning, if an Acadia representative comes from Ben Laden and get into Liberia and say, I'm here to recruit, you know, people to go and be terrorists. Guess what? Because they, they don't have anything to do. So they will automatically go into, you know, doing something by giving a little money and say, look, you may not necessarily die. We just need you to carry on X, Y, and Z because violence is all they know. So that group of people could be a recruiting bench, could be a recruiting site for terrorists, for missionaries, for, for people who want to carry on clandestine operations in different parts of the world. So what I'm looking at is in order for us to stop not just violence in Liberia, but violence globally, then we must teach these children, look, if somebody come to you right now and tell you, go and fight, they will say, no, I'm not going to take up arms because I think there is another way, there is a new form that we can go about doing this. Let's take, for example, the case of Matthew and the case of all the students who have gone through our program. Matthew is an ex-combatant who fought the war in 2003. Matthew was a child soldier. The only thing Matthew have known throughout his short life, 14 years old, is all violence. It's all about arms. Today, Matthew have come through the doors of Center for Peace Education. We tutor Matthew. Today, for the first time, Matthew is in school. Matthew is not in the third grade. Matthew is reading, is writing. I can put my life on the line and tell anybody, you go talk to Matthew right now. Ask him, pens and books versus arms and ammunition. Which one you will take? 100%, without a doubt, Matthew will clench on to his books. And clench on to his pen. This is the fundamental change I'm talking about. So, by you supporting the Center for Peace Education, it's not something locally, but they also have a global effect. And this global effect can go a long way by helping to change the minds of Matthew friends, by helping to change the minds of Liberians who knows nothing but violence. So, instead of Liberia being a new recruiting ground, for, for violence, Liberia can be a new ground for waging peace in West Africa, a new ground for waging peace around the world. And this is what I envision, that tomorrow these children who have gone through this violence themselves, these children who have experienced conflict themselves, they themselves too can go out there and start preaching peace. Because if you take, for example, all of the students who went through our vacation peace education school. Some of them were ex-combatants. Some of them were, were, were treated mildly in the war. Some of them had, you know, crazy thinking about even, you know, uh, 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 doing something of, uh, you know, paying debt, you know, going against someone who have done something to them, who have malice in their mind. Today, they are coming up saying, look, I forgive Mr. X, who, you know, killed my mother. I forgive Mr. X, who, you know, cut my legs. I forgive Mr. X, you know, who shot me in the arm. In fact, my own statistical person, as a dua, who went through this program, his, the guy who killed his mother, an ex-combatant, is living in Tapita, who killed his mother. He knows him. And after Isaac went through this program, he came up to the Center for Peace Education and said, you know what happened? I want to go and meet this guy in Tapita. I just want to give this guy a hug. And tell him, say, look, you know, I forgive you. Even though you killed my mother, but I forgive you. Because they hit not only Isaac alone, but so many Liberians who every day in their lives come across people who committed atrocities against them. They see them on a one-to-one -one basis. Guess what? These people cannot sit together in the same room to discuss developmental issues. Now, one of the biggest things in Liberia today or around the world, we talk about participatory development building through the World Bank for which I worked for before. I work in Liberia as the coordinator for local community development for the World Bank. When I went back to Liberia in 2005-2006, the 
The idea behind local community driven development approach is you should have people within the community coming together and saying, we as a community agree for us to build a school, agree for us to build a bridge. This is the land. We all going to help to build this school. We all going to help to make blocks. We all going to help and clean this place. Unfortunately, this participatory development approach is not working simply because people within the community are not feeling comfortable to sit in the same room looking at Mr. E, Mr. B, Mr. C who have gone to work and committed atrocity in the community during the war. Or looking at Mr. X's son who was the head of the rebels that brought people into the town and went into the villages and went into the farms and took away all the cattle and the, and the rice. They cannot sit in the room of this person. So when you talk about community participatory development, togetherness, when Mr. Moses come or Mr. Peter come, he said, look, you know what? You have Esther's in the room. You have a, a, a John in the room. So I'm not going to sit in the room. I'm going to leave the discussion. Then you sit them back and you say, well, is this then, you know, a community driven development approach? When you have people in the room who cannot sit down to decide on community issues. So at the local level, you, you, you still find the atrocity in the minds of the people, the hurt, that they can't sit down with people in their own villages to, to discuss community issues. But guess what? When you tell the people in higher positions, in higher areas, and say, look, before we move on with such a developmental approach, there is a need for us to really bring peace among the people at the local level. There is a need for us to bring about some local reconciliation in order for Mr. X to forgive Mr. Z because Mr. Z's son was responsible for the trusted committee in this area. But people close their eyes and pretend like it doesn't it, it didn't happen at all. People close their eyes and pretend that everything is okay and fine because what? We have signed a ceasefire. Because what? We have had elections. Because what? We see, you know, few constructions of, you know, government buildings going up. That does not mean peace. This is what in peace and conflict resolution we call negative peace. So what Liberia actually needs is a positive peace. And positive peace goes down to address all of these basic issues within the community. And this is what I'm trying to do. That these people in the community at the local level, can these people work together? Can these people come together? Can we reconcile our differences? Can we talk about what happened and how can we go over it? How can we live together in one? If Liberia cannot do this, this is false pretext, you know, uh, that there is peace. There is no peace. Liberia needs to go down and to the bottom of the fundamental basic things that are happening in the country on addressing the root causes of the conflict. And also on addressing people who are hurt. I myself, let's take for example, my grandmother was burned in a house or blasted. How do you expect me to feel? Should I go and look at the guy who did this to me and say, oh yes, Mr. X, hey, you know, thank you. Let's sit in the room and discuss peace. Let's talk about, about development in my community. I will have some hurt in my mind. How about people who tie me up? People who beat me up? People who lock me up in jail falsely? Should I just go and say, oh yeah, all is over because I have the United Nations coming and bringing $10 million to construct a school so I'm going to sit down with Mr. X who tied me up, who took my shoes, who beat me up, who killed my grandmother. Should I sit with him in the same room because what? Uh, USAID is giving me $1 million to come and do development issues or because the World Bank is giving me $1 million because United Nations is giving me $1 million. Your $1 million may be fine, but guess what? You are failing to address the fundamental issues in the minds of the people. Talk to me. Ask me what's going on in your community. Why is it that you are not involved in local development issues? Why is it that you can't sit in local community meetings? I will tell you, look, within the meeting, you have Peter, you have Paul, you have John. And guess what? John was a member of the rebel faction. John was responsible for burning down my grandmother's house and killing my grandmother. John was responsible for tying me up. John was responsible for jailing my sisters and my brothers. Therefore, I'm not going to sit in a meeting with John. Now you can go and talk to John. You can go and talk to Peter. You can go and talk to Paul and say, look, Paul, John, Peter, let's have a local, 
or local reconciliation. And through that, you will be able to build a national reconciliation. But unfortunately, again, when you go back to the political term, most of these people don't understand it that way because guess what? It is not a physical structure you can see. But what's going to happen is, from the example that I gave you, from what happened with the police station in Banda, from what happened with the university students in Morovia, from what happened with the police station in Seklipi, from what happened in Godre, these people, this is the thing that growing up in Liberia, these are the people who eventually, these youth, eventually are going to become what? The Minister for State of Personal Affairs, Minister for Education, Minister for different agencies, and guess what? They are all growing up with violence in the head. Just imagine a generation full of violence. What's going to happen? Don't you think that is a room for disaster? Therefore, we must teach peace.